throttled. I'm big enough and I post enough and damn it, people like me. Well, you're a very likable guy. So likable, in fact, that JD Vance followed <laughs> you per your request. I am so jealous. I'd love to know how that happened. I had taken the GED to graduate in high school. And the reason for that was that my family moved every six months growing up. I had an extremely bipolar father uh, who made extremely enough Extremely bipolar? Is, is extremely that really bipolar. That's can how I just, just... Can you be just a little bipolar? So he that... could only kind of carry a job for about six months and he would take on projects that would only last that long. He's sort of a general engineer, but he never went to school for it. He was taught by his father and then he picked it up and he's really great at math. He's a genius. I mean, the guy's brilliant. So we moved, though, every six months following him in his career. Now, my mom, she was in a plane crash, burned from head to toe in third degree burns, had a life after death experience, saved a family from a burning home, went and wrote a book about it called The Burning Within. And so at the same time that my father was moving us around and we were having some typical issues that you experience in that sort of lifestyle, domestic violence, constant threats of being homeless, constant self-deletion attempts. So I grew up sort of in and out of this world of wealth, but hitting crime and living, you know, living kind of two lives where I was lying to teachers. I was lying to the people around me. We ended up homeless. My dad took off with everything. And so I was homeless at 13 and we had tried going to homeless shelters, which is really a death sentence if you're not if you're not in that lifestyle it's very hard you can become victimized very very quickly and i saw everyone else getting all these government resources and handouts and benefits and food stamps and all these different programs that just seemed always a little bit beyond our reach because when you move and you're homeless, you don't have an address to put down on application so you're maintaining at this point still your family a connection to LDS Yes, because the morals and the basic rules, the, the idea of having covenants with God, the idea that there was a God, the idea that there was something greater out there than me, someone I could pray to, someone I could have faith in, something that I could hope in, was pivotal to who I am and to who how I was raised. This idea, this concept of right and wrong, and I had faith that if I worked hard and I was smart that God would help me. And I just watched Hillbilly Elegy and there's a scene where JD Vance goes to put his mother in rehab and he's he's going through law school interviews, right? He's trying to get a clerkship, he's trying to get any opportunity he can and he he's in Yale, which is a huge accomplishment, right? Um a tremendous accomplishment. Incredible how smart this man had to have been to get to where he's at. He's trying to check his mom into rehab and she's like, F this, I'm out of here. F you, I'm not doing this. And she storms off and he's using his last time to try and help his mom. And his sister stops him and she says, JD, you don't know everything. And I can't advocate for mom right now. I have to go, but try forgiveness. And he takes a moment, he goes and he sits in the car with his mom and she's upset. And, you know, she's, it's, it's a very hard thing to do to admit that you have an addiction, to admit that you're, you're weak. That's hard. And so I really feel for the mom in that scenario. I feel much more for JD Vance because I've been in that situation. I've been in his seat so many times. One thing that JD Vance talks about in his speeches at, at rallies and in person is something that I experienced. And that is, is that whenever things get really, really hard, there's always good people who are role models. There's always something good in this world. And one of those good things is you. And choosing forgiveness, choosing self-reliance, choosing responsibility is part of what makes us love this country so much is because in this country alone, can people like J.D. Vance and myself become the people we are today? Only in this country. Isn't that, really, that really true? Absolutely. Went back to South Korea. This, they went from nothing in the 1980s to becoming one of the world's highest grossing GDPs. They're incredible. But if you're poor in Korea, you're stuck. You're basically poor. If you are rich in Korea, you are basically rich. Now, 
America is slowly closing in. It's slowly establishing these very strict ceilings. And you see that in hillbilly elegy. And I experienced it, you know, in my own life where simple things like figuring out which, which fork is the salad fork, right? There's certain lifestyles that you have to adjust to when you're climbing the ladder, but America allows for that opportunity in ways that no other country can. And I can say that definitively. These structures that are created when the government picks winners and losers make it impossible for people like me and J.D. Vance to succeed. You know, things like uh, racial discrimination in hiring and in, in allowing people into Ivy League schools is a huge deterrent for people like J.D. Vance and myself to even try. Even then, we're still so open in terms of you can genuinely overcome so much hardship in this country. And I mean, the only thing really I think is almost impossible to overcome is the YouTube algorithm. <laughs> That's absolutely true. You know, I'm the child of an immigrant. My mother came from Cuba in 1956, right? Her parents left Poland. Oh. The Jewish Ashkenazi Jews from Poland left left Poland in 1935 because life had become extremely difficult for Polish Jews well before World War II began. My father was the son of a single mother, and his mother died when he was nine. And he was raised by his grandmother, who had come here from Czechoslovakia in 1898. I ended up going to Princeton wow. and uh, law school at Northwestern and becoming a um, famous social media figure. <laughs> oh, please. Very, very famous attorney. You're talking about amazing opportunities that America still provides. And yes, so much structurally is being destroyed. And, you know, that that's why we're fighting. That's why we're fighting. It is a fallacy. And in fact, it is, it is a fallacy that they, they want you to accept that you don't make a difference. Yep. That nothing you can do can change their domination of your life, their control over your choices. They're occupying the entire field of your options. Not true. Not everybody gets to be a lawyer. Not everybody gets to be good looking like me. Different sure. opportunities come to people different in your life. You have choices because by the grace of God, you're an American. And if you're with it enough that you're not strung out on meth, you're not tied up in a box under a bridge, you're able to hear the sound of my voice. That already puts you so far above the average level of existence of virtually everyone who ever lived on this earth since the time of creation that you are uniquely privileged and you have the ability to change things in small ways and large. And J.D. Vance is an example of someone who comes from all but tied up under a bridge, like Danny was describing at the beginning about her own uh, humble, to put it mildly, I would call them a traumatic, but she's not, a, not looking for uh, that kind of pity or condescension making differences in lives. It's an incredible thing. You can do it. You've done it by joining us here, by the way, in our first live stream.